Hello, sixth grade scientists. This is your teacher, Miss HC, and today I'm going to be walking you through the cross cutting concepts. So, cross cutting concepts are similar to our science and engineering practices, but instead of being things that scientists do the way the practices are, the cross cutting concepts are seven different ways that scientists approach looking at phenomena or problems and analyzing them to try and figure out what's going on. So every time we do a science unit, we are going to be focusing on using one cross-cutting concept as a way to analyze what we are seeing. Our cross-cutting concept for this unit about our soda can and about matter is going to be scale, proportion, and quantity. But before we dive into what those words mean, we're going to look a little more broadly at what a cross-cutting concept actually is. So a way that I think about cross-cutting concepts that I find really helpful is that they're like an Instagram filter. So you can use any cross-cutting concept for any science topic, but some cross-cutting concepts will work better with some topics, just like some filters look better on certain photos. So the important thing to know is that they will bring up different parts of the science topic or help you focus on different aspects of it, just like a filter will highlight different aspects of the same photo. So when we look at our soda can phenomena, we're going to be looking at it through the lens of scale, proportion, and quantity. So we are going to be looking at how scale of what we're doing is affected by what we can see and what we can't see, how the proportions or amounts of things affect the results of our can, and then how the quantities that we add or take away um, from your experiment affect our can. So our next section of the video is going to take us into a bit of a deep dive on scale, proportion, and quantity, and we're going to look at each word and identify some examples that you can use to fill in the graphic organizer on this slide. First is scale. So scale means that the same object can be viewed differently, um, and we can get different perspectives on it when we look from different scales. And a really helpful strategy with scale is to compare an object to something that you know the size or the scale of, and that can help you understand how big or small it is. So a really good example is this whale skull. When you look at it by itself, it doesn't really seem that big. But then when you see it next to this human, you can understand how large it is because you have a perspective or an understanding of the size of a typical human. So using objects that we understand and know from our everyday lives can help us understand the scale of something that we don't interact with as frequently. There are three scales that we are going to be using to study science phenomena this year. The first is microscopic. So microscopic means that something is too small to be seen. And things on the microscopic scale could include a viral particle, a human cell, like a red blood cell, a dust mite. So you could use any of these examples to fill in your graphic organizer, or you could brainstorm your own. But as a rule, things that are microscopic are too small to be seen by the human eye. Next up is macroscopic. Macroscopic is anything that is visible to the human eye. And macroscopic things can be very large or very small as long as you can see them without help from a tool or a piece of technology. For example, a sequoia tree is a huge, huge tree and a pebble is teeny tiny, but they are both macroscopic. A puppy is also macroscopic and I included it because it is very cute. Um, so again, these could be examples that you include in your graphic organizer or you could brainstorm your own. Our final scale is telescopic. And things that are telescopic are too large to see without technology or without assistance. So examples of things that are too large to see could be the Milky Way galaxy or our global oceans. We know both of those things are there, but we can't look and see them all at once. We have to really zoom out to get a full picture. Um, scale can also apply to time. So 7 billion years of history that Earth has been around can be a really hard thing for us to wrap our head around because our human lifespans are on the scale of 100 years, slightly more, slightly less, whereas 7 billion years is really a very different scale than what we are used to interacting with.
So again, scale can apply to size and it can also apply to time. In summary, scale can be microscopic, macroscopic, or telescopic. Um, and you want to make sure you have an example of each of these scales recorded in your graphic organizer. All right, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is proportion. So proportion means that the amount of one object affects another object in a predictable way. A really good example of this in the summertime is if you've ever made powdered lemonade. The amount of lemonade powder you're going to use is proportional to the amount of lemonade you wanna make. So if I was making a pitcher of lemonade for me and all my friends, I would put in maybe four or five scoops of lemonade powder, but if I was making a glass of lemonade for myself, I would probably only put in one scoop. So the proportion of powder that I use is related to the amount of water that I'm going to use. The amount of one thing affects the amount of another. Our final word in this cross-cutting concept is quantity, and quantity just means how much of something there is. But the important thing to know about quantity is that a different quantity or a different amount of something might be measured by a different scale. For example, we would measure the water in our hydro flasks in a very different quantity than we would the water in our swimming pool. When you buy a water bottle, the label will tell you how many ounces of water that bottle can hold. But you would never buy a swimming pool based on how many ounces of water it can hold because the water in our swimming pool is measured in gallons. If we were measuring the water in our swimming pool in ounces, it would hold hundreds of thousands of ounces. And that would not be a logical scale to quantify that amount of water. Okay, so now you can pause the video and use what we have just covered to fill in your graphic organizer. And then when you're ready, we'll talk about how you can use what we have discussed with scale, proportion, and quantity to update your notebook to describe your soda can experiment. So every time we do an investigation, you are going to get a page that looks like this. And this is the putting the pieces together part of our science learning routine. So every time we put the pieces together, you will describe what we did, record your observations and why you think this happened, connect to the driving question, which is on slide 11 in your notebook, and then you'll connect to our cross-cutting concept for the unit. So in this last section of our video, we're going to look at a couple examples of how you can connect the results of your soda can experiment to scale, proportion, and quantity. Some things to consider as you're looking for scale, proportion, and quantity in your experiment could be, did you change the quantity of any of the things you used? Um, for example, did you change the quantity of water you put in your can or the setting on the heat plate that you warmed your can at? Did you change the temperature scale or the difference between the hot and the cold? Did you make one thing warmer or one thing colder? Um, the quantity of water that your can held after it collapsed is also a way to look at quantity in this experiment. And then as the proportion of something changed, did the volume of the can change? So if you change the amount of water or the temperature, um, was there a proportional or a related impact on the volume of the can? And I realize as I'm saying it that that sounds a little bit confusing. So we are going to finish up today by looking at one more example that I think will help that make more sense. So Let's say in this example that I increased the quantity of water in my can. And then when I dunked the can in cold water, the volume of the can also decreased. This would be a proportional relationship. It would mean that the proportion of water or the amount of water that I put in the can is proportional to the amount that the can collapses. A final example is that if we used a different liquid, perhaps you saw that your can collapsed less. And we could determine this by measuring the quantity of water the can could hold. So we can use quantity to take data and make a statement about our results. I hope that this video helps you understand scale, proportion, and quantity and how it could have played a role in your soda can experiment. If you have questions as you are completing your graphic organizer or updating your putting the pieces together page, please add a comment to the assignment or send me an email. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Thank you very much.